How do we build a steel frame gate? What hardware do we use? What gate frames do we use? How do we connect it all together? It's probably one of the top questions I see, whether in the video comments or the community discussion tabs from you guys, the viewers. So we're here on site to look at the nuts and bolts of how I prefer to build a steel frame gate on steel posts to ensure that it doesn't sag or drag in the future. But before we get into that, if you guys find this content helpful or educational, heck, if it's even a little bit entertaining, it would mean the world to us if you gave it a like. Also, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit that notification bell. That way YouTube lets you know each and every week when we have new content available. All right, with that being said, let's dig into it. This is Joe Evers, the fence expert. My family has been perfecting their way of building fence for over 60 years, three generations. While there's more than one way to build a fence, I'm here to share with you our way. All right, before we get into the nuts and bolts and how this gate works, I wanna make one thing clear, and that is, this is not sponsored content. I'm not receiving compensation to show you guys the hardware and how it works. I simply found it a couple years ago at a trade show, started using it ever since. It makes sense and it works, so I wanna share it with you. Now, that's not to say that future segments won't be sponsored, but I'll make you this deal. If a segment is sponsored, I'll make it clear both in the video title and in the content that I'm producing that the segment is being sponsored and who it's being sponsored by. That way you guys will be very clear one way or the other. Is this original content produced simply by me or is it being sponsored by the manufacturer? All right, that being said, let's get into the nuts and bolts and how this thing works. All right, first impression is you don't see any gate hinges. On a traditional gate, both wood frame and unfortunately a lot of steel frame gates I see, you would see wood hardware, the gate hardware, bolted directly on the outside of the fence from the post section directly onto the two by four, uh, both at the top and the bottom. Now this gate was designed to swing inside the yard, but even if it were designed to swing outside of the yard, there still wouldn't be any hardware outside of the gate. Everything still attaches directly from the post to the gate frame. To get a better look at it, Let's go on inside. Now the first thing you notice, there's a lot of steel here, but you did notice it from the outside. That's because we bolted a two by four directly to the steel frame and then nailed the pickets to the two by four. So from the outward appearances, this looks like part of the fence. Now this gate swings in, so it's going to be inset from the fence. If you look closely, of course, you'll see the latch. If it was outward swinging, you'd also see some of the hinges, but for the most part, it looks like the rest of the fence. We're gonna weigh outside in. The next thing we get to is the steel frame. Now this steel frame was produced in-house. We welded ourselves out of galvanized steel tubing, but the manufacturer of the hinges and latches also manufactures an adjustable gate frame. We like making our own so that we can accommodate for slope. This gate happens to slope from the house down to the fence line. So a square gate frame probably wouldn't look right. From the gate frame, we're moving over to the gate hardware. Now, one thing you'll notice is again, we bolted directly from the gate frame to the gate hardware. The gate hardware is bolted directly to the steel post. Steel to steel to steel ensures that this gate's not going to sag or drag, warp or twist in the coming years, and really for the lifetime of this gate, barring an asteroid falling on it, a bus driving through it, that sort of thing. This gate is here to stay. Moving on, the gate hinge itself is pretty substantial. It's quite a bit larger than what you'd see at say your local DIY store. And honestly, it's quite a bit larger than what you see a lot of other fence companies using. This thing is built to hold some weight because the steel frame isn't light. You need a hinge that's heavy duty to hold it up and keep it looking straight. Now, as you guys can see, we've got the gate hinge bolted directly to the round steel galvanized fence post. Now we use round posts to accommodate for the way that the gate hinges attaches to the post. And this isn't your normal round steel gate post. This is a schedule 40, which simply means that it's a very thick wall thickness. It's a heavy duty post because essentially we're transferring weight from the gate frame through the gate hinge into this gate post. Now, if this were a standard round fence post, what we would see is over time, the weight of this gate would actually pull the top of that fence post over. Even though it's steel, the wall thickness really comes into place. You need a heavy duty gate post to hold up this much weight. All right, let's switch to the other side of the gate, to talk about the latching mechanism, but also how we attach these steel posts to our wood fence. Now, first impressions, obviously, this gate latch, significantly more heavy duty than a typical gate latch, which is a consistent theme for this steel frame gate. When you close this gate, it closes solidly, it shuts completely, and it's lockable. High winds aren't gonna blow this gate open. If 
you lock this gate, a potential intruder isn't gonna get this gate open either. Now again, just like the hinges, the latch attaches directly to the steel post. We're not relying on the wood portion of this gate at all to support any of the weight or to keep it shut. We're relying on steel because steel over time keeps its shape much better than the wood will. This gate will shut solidly for the lifetime of the gate. Now the second most frequent question I get is that how do you attach a round steel post to your wood framework? And that is through a heavy duty steel bracket. It's literally a wood to steel adapter and it's thick, it's heavy duty, and it's fully welded. Some of the ones you'll see in the market are quite a bit thinner and they bolt together rather than being welded. That gives them the opportunity for a bolt to work loose and the whole assembly simply to come apart. These are fully welded. They do have a keeper screw, but if this keeper screw ever gives you problems, it can be welded directly to the post for a very permanent solution. Now talking about the post, this latch post is set in the exact same way that the hinge post is. Here in the Midwest, we set at 24 inches of depth. Now, if you're in a northern or more cold climate, you'd probably want to set that post deeper to get under the frost heat. If you haven't seen our video already, we actually did a video specifically about how deep to set posts in relation to the frost depth in your region of the world. Now, when we're talking about diameter of the gate post hole, I'd like to see a minimum of eight inches. I'd love it if those posts could be 10 inches wide though, if the rock and foundation will accommodate it. So a 24 inch deep hole that's eight or preferably 10 inches around will hold typically 100 to 120 pounds of concrete per post. Now, while some might think that's a little overkill on the latch post, these latch posts actually take quite a bit of back and forth when this gate shuts. So ideally, I'd like to see the latch post have just as much concrete in it as the hinge post does. Now this customer took their project one step further and had the materials stained and sealed before installation. That ensured the stain got in all the nooks and crannies, and it also got everywhere that the materials overlapped. If we were to come out after the project is done and stain and seal this fence, it's gonna be really difficult to get in all the nooks and crannies and impossible to get to where all the materials overlap. Staining and sealing this fence before it went up ensured that it looks great for years to come and is protected from harmful UV rays. This fence won't go gray as long as the staining and sealing procedure is kept up and reapplied every three to five years. All right, now guys, I absolutely understand there's more than one way to complete a task. There's more than one way to build a steel frame gate. If you build steel frame gates and you build it in a different way, dare I say a better way, leave it in the comments below. I always love to hear how you guys complete your tasks and I'm always learning. The day you stop learning is the day you start falling behind. All right, guys, had to grab the camera to get away from a noisy AC system. But for now, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.